Once you've opened your copy of the Snowflakes drawing in Google Classroom, you're free to edit any of the pieces that you want on here to make it your own snowflake. The way the drawing is set up is it is a set of three exact copies of this one piece. So the first thing that I would do is to click once to select one piece of the snowflake and delete it. Then I would select a second piece of the snowflake and delete that. And then you can just work on editing this one part of the snowflake. When you're done editing this one piece, then we can make two copies and paste them on top of the snowflake to make the final product. In order to edit this one piece, you're also going to want to ungroup the shapes. The original drawing was created by putting all the shapes on here that I wanted and then grouping them together so that they would move as just one piece. So now we want to work backwards to ungroup the shapes so we can delete just one piece of this design at a time and recreate it. So I'm going to go up to the top of the screen where it says Arrange. And now I can click Ungroup. And then right away you can see before I click on anything that now some of these shapes have shown up on top of each other once I ungrouped them. So you can see that each of these lines was actually a separate piece and oh, I actually it actually looks like I grouped these as well. So I tried to just click on this one short piece and it ended up highlighting all four of them, which is a clue that I actually grouped each of those lines together so that they would all move as one piece. So I'm gonna go up to arrange again and I can ungroup those as well. And now if I click out and then try to just click on one of those again, yep, then we'll see that now they're ungrouped. So probably I'm gonna to wanna to come down and do that here as well on the bottom part of this snow, um, snowflake. There we go, yep, that one is grouped as well. So I'm gonna go arrange, ungroup. And I'm just going to click out. Okay, so now I can decide which of these shapes I want to delete and change. The only thing that you're going to want to leave on here is this one straight line that goes from top to bottom. So you can think of that as the base of your snowflake's um, arms, and then you're going to place shapes on top of that straight line so you do not want to delete that straight line and it looks like it's also grouped with the circle in the middle and we put the circle in the middle because we want to be able to see through our snowflake so that when we cut it out on the laser cutter <clears throat> we have an opening in the middle and then some of these darker shapes are also going to be openings so that when we set up our LED our light on the back of our snowflake we can see the light shining through so I'm gonna leave that piece alone but why don't we just start here at the ends. I can click once on that <clears throat> rhombus and then I can delete it. And I'm going to do the same down here on the bottom and delete that. And maybe I want to delete this rhombus here. And if I delete that, then I'm also going to want to delete this one here. Because remember, our snowflakes are symmetrical figures. So whatever I do to the top half of the snowflake, I want to duplicate on the bottom half of the snowflake. And whatever I do on the left side of the snowflake, I'm going to want to duplicate that on the right side of the snowflake. So I'm going to delete both the top and bottom rhombus. And now I can come up here to the Shapes tool, and if I click one time, I get a Shapes menu, and I can scroll, and as I hover, you'll see some different shapes. I'm just going to go to the standard Shapes menu, 
And in here I have a whole bunch of different shapes I can choose from. So maybe I want to add um, a triangle shape to my snowflake. So I'm going to click once. And then now I get this, my cursor has now turned into a cross. And so what's gonna happen now is if I click and drag, it will draw my triangle. And as I move the cursor around, you'll notice that I can change the shape of the triangle a bit. And I also get these measuring tools that pop up automatically. And so those are gonna help me size my triangle so that it is about the same length or height, or excuse me, so that it's about the same width or height as some of the other shapes I've already drawn. Right now it looks like it's telling me that if I stop here, my triangle will be as wide as the distance from the middle line to the edge of the circle. Or I can do something like this, and now it's showing me it will be as wide as the distance from that middle line to the edge of my um, longest diagonal line. So I'm gonna just play with that a little bit, and oh, there's an example of a height. This one's showing me that this height will be the same height as the distance from that bottom diagonal line to about the top diagonal line. I kind of like the height of the triangle that way, so I'm going to let go. And now I can click and drag it to the top of my snowflake. Now on your snowflake, you're not gonna play with color much on this drawing because color doesn't show up on the laser cutter. So what we're gonna do is the only color you're gonna use is black. And the reason for that is the pieces that we color in black are pieces that are going to be cut out on the laser cutter. And so we want to choose a few of those shapes that we wanna actually cut um, all the way out and then things like this big circle around the outside here, that layer is, is also gonna be cut out. Um, but these lines that are just straight lines that I've drawn, those we can choose to just etch into the cardboard, which means it's going to burn just a little ways into the cardboard to make the shape of the line, but it's not gonna cut out the shape completely and all the way through. So I'm going to color in this triangle black just to signify that that's a piece that I actually want to cut out all the way. Now, remember, my snowflake is symmetrical, so the top half should match the bottom half, which means this triangle needs to also come down here on the bottom of my snowflake drawing. I could redraw it, but it's hard to get the exact same size if I draw it by hand again. So what I'm going to do is just click one time to highlight that triangle. And then I'm going to use Control plus D to duplicate the shape. So I'll hold down Control and then tap D. And now I have an exact duplicate. So I'm gonna drag it down here. And then turning my shape can be really easy too. So if I put my cursor over that blue dot at the top there, you see it, turn, it changes again. And that means that now I can click and drag to rotate my triangle. And so if I wanna make sure it's really straight up and down, I'm gonna make sure that it says that I've turned it 180 degrees. The other thing I can do, let's see, I'm gonna hit Control plus Z, undo, is I can hold down the Shift key while I turn. And now it's gonna to snap to just the whole number angles. So I don't have to read all the little tiny angles in between and it'll get to 180 faster and then let go. And now it's been turned completely upside down and I can use that red line to make sure that it's centered on top of the black line and then kind of move it up and down where I need it to. But let's see, this one doesn't give me a measuring tool so I'm just gonna have to say that that's about the same distance from the edge as the other one. And now both of my shapes are on there. So when you're done picking out all your shapes, you're gonna do, you're gonna wanna group everything on this line all together just like I had done before. So I'm going to click on the first shape, then I'm going to hold down the shift key and click on each of the other shapes one at a time, holding, oh, I don't want the circle though. I'm going to click again to let go of the circle. 
but I do want each of these shapes that are on the line. Okay, and then down here, I have to keep holding that shift key the whole time. <clears throat> now, everything on that line is selected. I'm gonna go up to Arrange and Group. Now, if I click out, let's see, I'm gonna click and just drag to make sure, yep. And let's undo that so it goes right back to center. So I'm gonna do, I can either come up here and click the Undo button or Control Z. Okay, back to center, good. Now, I want to duplicate this piece, and I'm going to make one, two other lines that I can layer on top of each other so that I have a snowflake with six arms. So I'm going to do Control plus D to duplicate. Ah, and there's my next one. I'm going to, I'm just going to turn this a little bit to start, so I'm going to turn the whole thing a bit. Now I'm going to line up the circle on top of the circle, and oh, that red line is showing me the very center of my page. Let's see if that works. Oh, my other piece is not right on the center of the page, so I'm going to try and just line that up. Mm-hmm. Circle on top of circle. There it is. Okay. And now I want to turn this a bit more so it's not so close there to the first line. And I think if I go to about 45 degrees, it looks pretty good. I think it's still a bit close. So maybe I'll try 55. Okay. And now we're going to duplicate that one more time. So Control plus D. And this leg is going to go the other direction. Let's layer the circles on top of each other. Oh, get a bit closer there. I know, almost should be it. And there we go. 